Ткань, способная выдержать попадание пули. Revolutionary bulletproof fabric, biocompatible polymers to cover burn wounds, covers that strengthen instruments. Daily scientists are searching for new materials to improve our lives. Equipment made by NTMDT provides solutions for these tasks. Помогает решить эти проблемы. Today, scanning probe microscopes by NTMDT are sold in many countries around the world. Results from research with these devices are published in leading scientific magazines, such as International Journal of Science and Nature, around the world. The company, with its 16% share of the world market, is the second largest manufacturer just behind Brooker Corporation, the world giant of scientific instrumentation. It all started in 1989, when the founder and CEO of the company, Viktor Bikov, realized that the type of devices he needed in microelectronics would also be quite useful to a large number of scientists and engineers. It was obvious that the devices would be needed not only by our department, they'd be needed everywhere. Consequently, there will be a demand. That's why we decided to start development of these devices and to sell them. At the first glance, what is at the core of surface research seems like a simple methodology. A thin wire probe moves in small increments along the surface, collecting information about the surface's properties. Different types of probes allow gathering of information about the composition of the sample at any particular point. This technology has nothing in common with the common optical microscope. The images cannot be seen through a regular eyepiece. All information must be processed in a computer. Creating a device that will be accepted by the market took a long time. First of all, the company had to find capital. They managed to get $2 million loan with the help of the Nobel laureate Alexander Prohorov. What we needed was money. We had to buy machines and computers and things like that. But there was nothing to sell yet, because we had no product. Although there was at that time a positive development. In those days, the Ministry of Economy launched interest-free loans. Alexander Prokhorov supported this program. He wrote a supporting letter on our behalf, and that helped us to secure such a loan. With this money, the first series of microscopes was built. The very first device was sold to the Institute of Crystallography of the Russian Academy of Sciences. But after the collapse of the USSR, the domestic market was extremely small. There was no money to support science. Italian colleagues, scientists, have come to the rescue. They signed up for the first sales in the universities of Padua and Genoa. These first sales were not easy. We began to work with an Italian company called ASZ from Padua in Italy. It helped us tremendously. At that time we were so much in the dark about so many modern electronic components, because there were no reference books. We had to make quite a lot of guesses about how each of those components worked when we built the device. But amazingly enough, we did build it, and it worked. But the screws were all different colors, and so the price dropped. This situation reduced the income of this young company by about $30,000, a lot of money in those days. But this lesson was very useful. The company's team realized how important the overall impression is and not just the quality of the technology inside. You cannot do something unique and think that everything else is the user's problem. Our nation has always been a country of Guinness World Records. We had no commercial technologies. Later, they realized that the Guinness Records were not enough. We needed infrastructure, and therefore we had to understand the competitive market all over the world, and we had to strive to be the best in the world. A little later, the company was able to get support in the domestic market. There was an unwritten rule that academic institutions should only buy domestic equipment. This was a risk, but in the opinion of Mikhail Kirpichnikov, who worked in those days in government agencies, the risk paid off.
At first sight, with all its ambiguity, it looked like a strong anti-corruption decision. In fact, as you know, most corruption is based on kickbacks in the procurement of imported equipment. Interesting technological discoveries of our scientists and engineers have always attracted the attention. But many people said that there are many problems connected with servicing Russian devices. Instructions in Russian, inability to obtain qualified repair of the broken equipment, etc., repelled Western buyers. NTMDT had to break down stereotypes and create high-quality customer service. Customer service is the provision of service to customers before, during and after a purchase. Customer service is a series of activities to enhance the level of customer satisfaction. The company's specialists test each product before the sale and produce adjustment in place for future work. If necessary, they train people to work on it. One trip to the buyer may take several weeks, but no one will buy the probe microscope without the help of specialists. Even the cheapest device in the portfolio of NDMDT costs about $20. You have to provide a service in such a way that it enables you to exchange any components that fail or don't work properly. There's no way around this requirement, not if you're going to provide a truly high-quality service. Another innovation demanded by the market was remote control of these devices. All the microscopes have the Internet connection. In the case of an irregular situation, the user can contact customer support and they can connect to any device in the world from their desk. Our service people are always in the chat room answering customers' questions. If there's a need for visual contact, we can always communicate with the client through Skype and help to solve their problems that way. Gradually, the company has developed a strong reputation. The number of customers started to grow. The staff increased. In 2003, the company had about 100 people. Now, there are about 500. In 2009, sales exceeded $50 million. If I was asked, are there any other companies from Russia that are trustworthy in the instrument market, I would have to say that NTMDT is in a unique position. Outside the instrument market, I only know of T Platforms, a supercomputing company that has a similar reputation to NTMDT, and they might already be comparable out of all the major companies that are well known in the global market. Today, the scanning probe microscopes are an attribute to the leading laboratories of research centers and universities. And beautiful pictures from the devices actually carry a lot of data. Some devices of the company work at the Bauman Moscow State Technical University. With these devices, people study how nanoparticles of different substances affect the strength of the alloys. We recently researched the properties of nanostructures in combinations with various metals like cast iron and steel. We looked closely at the effects of nano additives on the mechanical properties of cast iron in differing applications such as construction materials. NT-MDT probe microscopes have a very important application in the field of metallurgy. The scanning probe microscopes are not only applicable for nanotechnology, but also very useful for biology. More than 10 microscopes are at use in different departments of the Faculty of Biology of Moscow State University. With NTT-MDT microscopes, we can see almost all available items, such as proteins, DNA, viruses, bacterial cells, eukaryotic cells, tissues, lipids and biopolymers. Despite the importance of special devices for the development of science, everything still depends on the researcher. The device, a tool, just will be brought to best use.
People really are the most important thing in science. Let me give you an example. In 1984, the British government decided that it would close its ozone measuring station in Antarctica. That was at a time when the American satellite Nimbus had been orbiting the Earth for six years. It measured and created a map of the whole Earth's ozone layer. But only people were able to make a very startling discovery. They learned that for the last two months over Antarctica, the ozone layer has been depleting. Sometimes the originators of new inventions are the scientists who are working on the instruments of the company and they offer some unusual technological solutions. Sometimes it leads to the creation of entire new areas of activity. For example, in the near future a new probe microscope will be released, allowing for search for defects in pipelines. Metals can suffer from a disease. It's called pitting corrosion. If the metal gets sick, a hole will appear in the pipe within a couple of years. We need to know if the metal is ill or not. And if it is, we have to change that section of the pipe. The need to detect pitting corrosion or other defects on a plane's wing led us to create this new device. It was our user, Peter Zdanov, who came up with this idea. In recent years, the company is trying to increase sales abroad by opening new offices. After all, in business it is important not only to develop a new product, but also to offer it where there is a demand. But not all countries accept this aggressive campaign. We launched our first campaign to support sales in the Netherlands. But then, after a while, it became clear that this was not the most welcoming place. The Netherlands is a socialist country where people work for only five hours. That's all. The work is over. Opening offices in the US and China was an important step in the company's life. But the company does not rest on 16% of global market share. The company is committed to become the number one in its segment. Viktor Bikov ponders daily what next steps should be taken to accomplish this.